All right, folks, it's hour number three on a Friday it means the final hour of the week. And on this hour, we'll kick it off with Roger Simon, co-founder and CEO of PJ Media. He has written a, a column uh, calling for, uh, well, the uh, impeachment of Barack Obama. Uh, we'll talk about that. Then the panel. Uh, and the panel will weigh in. Joining us once again, we have the founder of Less Government, Seton Motley, and Lignet Chief Analyst, Fred Flights. Sabrina Schaefer, Executive Director of the Independent Women's Forum. All that, give me five and more, if you could take it, on this final hour of the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television. Ready, yeah. Fire away. Five, five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary entertainment, entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. now. Here is Steve Malsberg. The 14th is the day you're talking about. Yeah. According to the emails and the timeline, sure. the CIA circulates new talking points after they've removed a mention of Al-Qaeda. Yeah. And then at 621, the White House, you, Me. add a line about the administration warning of September 10th of social media reports calling for demonstrations. True? Uh, I believe so. Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this was like two years ago. Dude, this was like two years ago, man. Far out. Uh, I, I just can't believe what I was hearing watching Brett Baer interview uh, former NSC uh, spokesman Tommy uh, Vader. Uh, joining us now is uh, Roger Simon, co-founder and CEO emeritus of PJ Media. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I mean, I, 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 I can't. I, I couldn't believe what I heard. First of all, um, you know, how's he supposed to remember? This is only the focal point of, of the Benghazi investigation. This has only been a controversy for, you know, the good part of a year. And, uh, well, dude, it was two years ago. I, I can't believe that. Well, this dude, he'd been listening to some old Led Zeppelin albums that night. You know, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so, so I also want you to hear one other thing before we go, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but uh, let's listen to cut number uh, 28 here. Watch cut number 28. The ground testified that they knew where the ambassador was, that they were very military no, in their precision. No, I remember it was not guys that were coming to protest. Brett, they had mortars Brett, and heavy weapons. Brett, a couple of things. One, I was in the Situation Room that night, okay, and we didn't know uh, where the ambassador was definitively. In was fact, the there president was a, in the Situation Room? No. No, the president wasn't in the Situation Room. He, he assumes he was in the White House, but he never came to the Situation Room. He was asked, when Hillary made the call to the president, where was the president? I don't know. I mean, Roger, this is, in, this is intolerable. Has anybody checked what basketball games were on that night? <laughs> <laughs> that may, that's what Sherlock would do. Now, I mean, I, you know... This is a good day, though, because Boehner has finally gotten off. This took us, for whatever reason, it took him so long to give us a House Select Committee right. on Big Island. And they've, and the, uh, and, they've subpoenaed John Kerry. And I understand, yes, and I understand, best of all, Trey Gowdy is going to be heading up that committee, and Trey Gowdy seems to know how to do it. Yes. So, uh, you know, I'm feeling good today, uh, for once. <laughs> about the possible future of our country. But the job is for all of us to try to communicate this outwards and beyond the right-wing choir, which is always a problem. All right, well, you know, you, you talk about how you wrote uh, that uh, Benghazi was worse than Watergate, and you wrote this back on September 29th of 2012, and that was just, uh, you know, that was just uh, the two weeks after, after the attack. Um, and, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, you, you saw the light right then and there. I guess I did, but I'm not making any special claims of being a savant. I think it was pretty obvious. I mean, nobody died in Watergate, and in Monica Gate, the only thing that got hurt was a dress. Well, so what, it, what do you think like, is going to happen? What, what, what do you think is going to happen? Um, you know, I, it, it seems, and let's, let's, let's focus on it from this point before we get to uh, uh, politically speaking, it seems like... Uh, a, a, a decent portion of the media, the so-called mainstream media, is offended by the way they're being treated by the likes of Jay Carney. Uh, it looks like it because, well, you know, what happened is 
the, the, the administration box themselves in a hole because by lying to the degree to, to which they lied, which is really unprecedented, they went deeper and deeper into this thing. So eventually, eventually, Carney was placed in, and he's such a loyal apparatchik creep. He was placed in the position of having to lie so obviously, like he's been doing the last few days. So everybody now, the, the media is now in an odd position. Because if they've been the loyal court eunuchs of Obama from the time he was elected, but now they're being exposed as court eunuchs, and they can't, you know, so they're in a, a little bit of a bind, and they have to sort of wake up. The New York Times, I predict, will not. Although I heard, I did hear one writer from the New York Times, whose name escapes me, on Morning Joe this morning, actually say that this is not going to go away. Now he didn't say he would he would help in that effort, but he did say it's not going to go away, which I was pretty shocked at. All right, so if the if the media, you know, if this does, if this when this select committee, and thank goodness that finally kicking and screaming, John Boehner has been dragged to uh, to to appoint the select committee, and uh, and as you say, he put a very fine man Trey Gowdy. I, I couldn't think of a better person to be in charge of it. Um, and uh, when this is televised, and when this. When they call John Kerry and when they call Ben Rhodes and when they call the former director, acting director of the CIA to say there was never a video involved and when they call, I hope, Hillary Clinton, um, yes. what do you think we're going to, what, what is this going to be like? The best television we've ever seen. <laughs> you know, forget about the voice. <laughs> It, well, it's something I'll tell you what, I, I, I think it's going to capture America and I think it's going to come at a time leading up to the 2012 elections um, and, and uh, not that the Republicans need any, any help, but I got to tell you, Donnie Deutsch notwithstanding, who uh, went on a rant that Republicans shouldn't go here because it'll be bad for them somehow, and to his credit, Joe Scarborough put him in his place vehemently, um, I, I, I just, I just got to say that uh, I think that this has lasting effects beyond 2014 right through to 2016. I think so, but there will be interesting things that will pop up. I'm going to make a prediction here, because I was always curious about why Boehner didn't do this earlier. And I think it has to do with the fact that information was being given to Boehner by the administration and the CIA or somebody to the effect that national security was involved and keep your mouth shut. And, and he complied with that. He's going to look bad. Because that stuff is going to start to dribble out. So not every Republican will be untarnished. That's just a, a, a what's going to happen, I think. But, you know, well, I'm not, I make no Nostradamus claims, but I am the guy who said this was worse than Watergate two weeks after it happened. But I know it's the only one. Because it was so damn obvious it was. All right, so Boehner and other Republicans could be tarnished. That's that's entirely possible. Do you think that this, in the end, because remember there was a time when we heard reports about the fact that there were uh, there was an arms deal from Libya to Syria to the rebels, and that's what this. Do you, I mean, do you, and, I think that's probably true. Yeah, I think. I, but what is also true, and what really should be the heart of the investigation, is what went on between Hillary and Obama at the 10 p.m phone call, why they decided to blame this all on a video, and also, which I think is related to it, why the military was never ordered to help save these guys. Right, and we had the general yesterday testifying that they absolutely should have tried to of save these guys. Of course, they didn't know when it was going to end. It's funny, speaking about not being Nostradamus, not even Nostradamus could have told you when these thugs were, were going to stop attacking. Right, so why didn't they go to combat? They, it's not like why they had they, a time limit to beat. Right, you're absolutely they right. Had no time limit. So, but it was someone didn't give them the directive, and why? And I think the why is, and I hope this comes out, the why is that they didn't want it to be clear at that point in history that terrorism of the Al Qaeda sort was still on the march and maybe even growing. Right, because for political. Obama had been putting out the narrative. You know, Bin Laden's dead right. and GM is alive. And that's consistent with Ben Rhodes' email that was just discovered that has sparked, uh, re sparked the, uh, this whole discussion that we're having on, on, on Benghazi. Um, uh, now, now, Mike Morrell, you know, well, well, before we get to Mike Morrell, you know, we can't forget here, Roger, and I know you're not, that when Hillary Clinton met the bodies, when those bodies came home, Hillary Clinton looked the parents in the eye when she shook their hands, or in one case, I was told by one of the parents, she looked right stone cold face past him, but said, We're 
we're going to get the guy who made that video. So they continued that narrative all the way until the bodies came home. To the parents of the people who were murdered. I mean, you know, look, every politician is cynical, self-serving, not every, but almost every. And we're used to that. But this is on a level that is pretty hard to come Well, let, let, me, let me give you another politician who is uh, here that uh, we, you, I'm sure you're willing to comment on. Um, this is the, um, uh, the Pelosi sound. This is 31. Listen to Nancy Pelosi yesterday. What I will say is, again, diversion subterfuge. Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Why aren't we talking about something else? Whatever was in that, what, what I know of what I've read in the press about the, um, uh, that those emails were very consistent with what was put out there before. I don't think there's anything new there. You know, imagine, you know, I, I, it, my blood is boiling so much that I really have to work on controlling myself. Can you imagine the, the, the parents who lost their sons listening to that garbage coming out of her mouth? I, I don't know that I'd be able to control myself if I was a parent. I wouldn't. But I'll tell you something. What Nancy Pelosi proves unequivocally is that two-thirds of San Francisco is brain damaged. <laughs> <laughs> and I would assume that you're saying you're putting her in that uh, category. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm putting the people who elected her. She's oh, a oh, I got you. I got you. All and, right. And, 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 you know, I mean, she also proves that what a liberal is today, in quotes, is just a rich reactionary. All right, let me ask you two questions before I let you go, Roger. One, uh, what happens to Hillary as a result of this? How damaged does she get? How does it affect her going forward once she testifies before this select committee? That's the $64,000 question, because if Trey Gowdy does his job and those people do his job, she's finished. But, you know, cats have nine lives. I think America hangs in the balance of all of that. It's really spooky. It's very dramatic. I think we'll all be watching. Now, what about uh, Barack Obama? What happens to him as He's a result finished. of this? He's already done. Barack Obama is an afterthought right now. I mean, I, I'm the one who was arguing for impeachment, but it was like theatrical on my part to get attention. I mean, it's too late for impeachment. By the time any kind of impeachment occurred, uh, we'd be into the next election already. It's, uh, Barack Obama has been a lame duck president for a year. I mean, no one takes him seriously, unfortunately, for the world. Well, so that's what's happening. Yeah, but don't forget, he has a phone and a pen. He sure does. As he will, uh, he as anything he, he can. But I, 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 you know, he's weaker and weaker and weaker as things go on. But in the, the, in the real, the real situation now is Hillary, because if she gets elected after this, there's no going back. All right, Roger. Great to talk to you. We'll uh, certainly check in with you again soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll tell you, folks. Very, very interesting. Uh, Roger Simon, co-founder and CEO emeritus, emeritus of uh, PJ Media, award-winning novelist. And um, it, it, is, it is not going away. And I can't tell you. I can't tell you. The egg. You couldn't go to ShopRite supermarkets all across this country or Publix down in Florida and down in the South, wherever they are, and buy up all the eggs. And, and, and you couldn't buy enough eggs to put on the faces of the media in this country and the left in this country and the Nancy Pelosi's in this country who for a year now, more than a year, have been saying, Benghazi, what, what are you talking about, Benghazi? There's, not, there's no Benghazi, it's, it's over, it was terrible, it was, I'm sorry, but it's, it's done, you know? And, and now, now, thanks to, and let's not lose sight of this fact, thanks to Judicial Watch, Judicial Watch got these documents released. The White House didn't release them, uh, the Republicans couldn't get this document released. Judicial Watch got this email released. It has sparked all this now. Finally, John Boehner appoints a select committee. Finally, uh, they're going to subpoena uh, John Kerry. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be before the select committee. That's premature. I think he's going to be subpoenaed first just before uh, one of the regular committees already investigating this. And, um, but you're going to see Hillary and Rhodes and Kerry and, and, and maybe Carney. You're going to see them all. Susan Rice. We're going to find out who she talked to, what they told. We're going to find out. Unless they say, well, I... You know, executive privilege, I, I can't talk about this. It goes to national security. Don't count that out. 
on the Steve Malzberg Show. The panel is next. Don't go away.